The Pelicans are nothing if not consistent as they lose to the Sacramento Kings by only scoring 12 points in the fourth quarter, falling to 1-8 and eight on the year. We're going to break this game down, and I'm going to rant about Bally Sports in the third segment of today's show. Let's do it in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans. Your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans in NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen every single day. We are free and available five days a week for you all. Breaking down this team, whether it's a win, one single win, or eight losses, whether it's Zion News, whatever it might be, we're breaking it all down here at Locked On Pelicans, available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all on this Thursday, day after the Pelicans fall 112-99 uh, to the Sacramento Kings. We're going to talk about it because this game is like the most perfect encapsulation of the Pelicans. I'm not really sure what what they were going to do in this game, but this kind of seems to fit it. And then I'm going to rant about Bally Sports in the third segment of today's show because that was just bad yesterday. If you wanted to watch this team, they made it way too difficult on you. This episode of Locked On Pelicans brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. All right, so the Pelicans fall to the Sacramento Kings uh, 112-99. You know, I, I don't think there's any reason to be upset over a loss, over this loss, like at all. And I don't mean that in any sort of sarcastic way. I told you all yesterday what to expect from this team right now, right? No Zion, no Brandon Ingram. It's going to be tough for them to win when there's 50 points on the bench. This team fights hard. And they're competitive for three quarters. That's something that you as a fan should actually really be proud of. They seem to have gotten a coach who can get through to these guys. And after the debacle that was Stan Van Gundy last year, having a coach who's 40 years old, who seems to kind of be on the rise and someone who fits well with this team, who gets a lot out of his players. This is all great. I love that, right? Like you finally, after three years, have the right coach in place. And this team fights hard. They didn't always do that last year, right? There are a lot of games they just mailed in. Eric Bledsoe literally said he wasn't paying attention. And they 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 you know, even in the fourth quarter when things are falling apart, they're they're never just giving up and making a lot of like just I don't care kind of plays. So they they try hard. And then in the fourth quarter, they they just lose the game because they don't have anyone that's that's a closer. They don't have more talent than the opponent. That effort We'll get you close for three quarters, but this is a star-driven league. This is a talent-driven league, right? Like, this is... I'm not going to get upset at these guys for losing because they're not good enough to win. It's just kind of, like, that simple. You know, like, I, I don't have deeper analysis on this necessarily for you. These guys just aren't that as good as the Sacramento Kings. They're not as good as the Phoenix Suns. So they play hard for a little while, and then they lose. This is how it's going to go. Until either B.I. comes back and things stabilize a little bit, or both Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson can come back, and we can kind of see this team at full strength. You can see it watching this team right now. There's a good team there. They're hiding under, you know, a, a layer of clouds, a layer of smoke, smog, whatever you want to call it, mist. Uh, fog, that's probably the right word. And when you add Zion in there, that kind of goes away, Right. And they're so much better all of a sudden. It's like a beautiful city. I don't know. The analogy got away from me. But you can see that. You can see they have guys that can shoot the three fairly well that are going to take some heat off of Zion. They're going to try hard. Defensively, I think they've been better than what their numbers indicate because that defensive ranking is also really based off of them turning the ball over a ton. And like in the first half, they had just six turnovers in this game. All of that's great. Oh, that's really good. And then in the fourth quarter, they completely fall apart. Where where there's where you should be frustrated, and I think it's a right to be frustrated, is the way they fall apart in the fourth quarter. 
you know, look, they scored just 12 points in the final frame in this one. And at one point had, I think it was turnovers on five straight possessions. They look like they forget how to play basketball. I don't know how you can look good for three quarters and then just make boneheaded plays in terms of turnovers and things like that that they're doing. You know, you saw some, I don't want to call it progression because we got to see if it's consistent to call it that, but you had a good game from Nikhil, you had a good game from Kyra Lewis Jr., and then they vanished, and that play all went away in the fourth quarter, and I don't get how you can do that for three quarters and then, like, boom, it's gone. It's one thing to not win, but to just go from playing really good to not playing too well like that's it's kind of night and day and it's such a dramatic shift and kind of about face that it's it's tough and that's where this game really got away from it's the it was the fourth quarter it's just kind of really as simple as that and look they're playing on the second night of a back-to-back the same thing literally happened last night but the Pelicans were four of 19 In the fourth quarter, 12 total points. They had five turnovers in the fourth quarter as well. Just flat out bad. They were 0 for 7 from 3 because they start chucking the ball and getting nervous. Just kind of like one of those things. They're not as talented as the other team. You know, it's it's the shrug emoji that I always use. I don't don't have deeper analysis here for you when it comes to this sort of thing because it just kind of makes sense that this is the way it goes. It's just annoying that they look that bad in the fourth quarter at times when they've looked pretty good other times and it just completely goes away and it just upends everything and the Kings went on a 14 nothing run and that was basically all she wrote there en route to a 112-99 loss. It is what it is. I'm not upset about it because that's what this team is right now and it shouldn't the expectation shouldn't be that they're anything different. Frustrating, disappointing, yeah, but I don't think you can get too upset about this. But we did see some good games from the most part from Nikhil Alexander-Walker and Kyra Lewis Jr. We'll talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Then segment three, Bally's, I'm coming for you. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by rockauto.com. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models out there, it's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you want or to give you options on the parts that you want. You're going to go in there. You're going to tell them what you need. They're going to give you a generic part that's going to have a fixed price, and that's just what you got to buy. Maybe it fits your car. Maybe it doesn't. Who knows who's really making it because that's all they carry. You don't want to deal with that. You don't want to get a part that's expensive that's not right for your vehicle just because that's what they happen to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. So save time and money when using rockauto.com. Do not choose to spend 30, 50, 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. You need a fuel pump? It's going to be 353 at the chain store. It's 216 at rockauto.com and it's going to fit because their catalog is so easy to navigate and you can just quickly see all the parts of Available for your car or truck. You click on the year, the make, the model. It's really that simple. They're going to show you everything that will fit your car, and then you can choose the brands and specifications that you want. You want your car to go super fast? You get the the performance parts, the race car parts. You need something to just get you around the city because your vehicle's so important to you. Getting to work and the like. You can get the parts that are a little bit cheaper that fit your budget. So go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there. How did you hear about us? Box Selenia. We sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is also brought to you by betonline.ag. We are back and better than ever. BetOnline.ag has a new web interface for the start of basketball season, more props, odds, and lines than ever before. And BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this year. You want to bet the over-under on turnovers for the Pelicans? You can do that. You going to fade them in the fourth quarter? Probably a smart bet. Go make some money off of it right now. So head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you use promo code Locked On. You're going to get that bonus, and it's like you've already won a bet. Whether it's basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Sports, bet online where the game starts. So thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen every single day. Free and available five days a week for you all on every single platform. 
No one else coming to you like this. No one's talking about this game, right? Because it was terrible. It was late and they could barely watch it. But we are here at Lockdown Pelicans. So please leave a five-star review with a comment. Tell a friend about the show and subscribe, whether it's on wherever you get your podcasts or available on YouTube. And make sure Locked On Saints with host Ross Jackson is your second listen. Michael Thomas out for the year. Is Odell Beckham Jr. somehow in the works to New Orleans? What's going on with the QB situation? He's going to break down everything black and gold for you. All right, we were talking about the Pelicans, you know, just kind of standard game. 112-99 loss to the Sacramento Kings. No big surprise. I'm not upset. There's no reason to be upset. Life's too short for that sort of thing for just an undermanned team to go out and lose to a better team. But at least they tried hard, right? Like, good job, good effort. You know, I, I don't fault them right now. Two guys, though, that have been struggling did play well in this one and showed flashes, and that is something that is both good and bad, right? It's a little bit maddening that we haven't really seen this from these two guys all season long. Nikhil Alexander-Walker and Kyra Lewis Jr. Nikhil's been just flat out bad on both sides of the ball all year long, and it's really disappointing. Whereas Kyra's been a little bit inconsistent, so shown some flashes, but... Just not enough to rely on and not enough to really kind of take you to these wins right now when, like, you really need them to. Also, no Herb Jones in this game. Should have mentioned him earlier. He's been, you know, arguably the second best player for New Orleans this season. Maybe the best. Um, second best, probably behind Jonas Valanciunas. So, Kyra Lewis Jr. and Akil finally have good games. It's in a loss, but it at least kind of shows you that there's a way to get these guys going. And it's kind of similar for both of them, right? At times, I think they fall in love with jumpers. Nikhil misses a couple shots, he struggles a little bit, and he starts launching like deep threes just to see if that gets him going. Against the Phoenix Suns, he hadn't like made a shot in the game. And you saw him take like what looked like a heat check three, like a, a dude who's made like four straight threes, where you kind of take that 36 foot step back three or whatever to try and just swish it and be like, oh man, I can't miss right now, I'm feeling it. You can't do that when you're like 0 for 7 from 3 and he was taking shots like that. And it's just, it's not a good way to play and it's not a good way to get going. But Nikhil Alexander-Walker and Kyra Lewis Jr. in this one, they finished with 16 points and 14 points respectively, kind of did what they needed to do. And that's get to the basket. For Nikhil, you're ambidextrous and you have really good size at 6'6", 6 6'7". 6 Use your length, use your left or your right hand to finish at the rim. Suck the defenses in, and then when they start to take that away from you, dish some dimes, dude. You saw it. He had that great backwards pass in transition when they were terrified about him trying to score. Led to an easy bucket for New Orleans. It started to get him going, and you can see he is very much a kind of confidence player. When he's in a groove and things are going well, there's like a little bit of extra oomph in his game. He plays with like a little bit of extra juice, right? Like you see it out there. It passes the eye test. So what they need, what he needs to do, what the team needs to do is get him going either early with, with some designed plays. You know, Willie Green has talked about how it's kind of a free-flowing offense. They're not calling set plays and sets and things like that from the sideline all the time. Do it. Do it. I don't care if that's not what you do. Get Nikhil going. Get him in a groove and help him help you win the game. And I think that's going to be a key part for him going forward. they got to find a way to get him going early. For Kyra Lewis Jr., it's use your freaking speed, man. You're one of the fastest players in the league, I think. Use that speed and that explosiveness to just beat guys and get to the rim. Don't worry about the three-point shot. If you can get inside and score, you're going to be just fine. He was 2 of 3 from deep. It opened his game up, but he was also 6 of 9 from the field overall. So he was, what? what is that, 4 of 7 is what he shot inside the three-point line, yes, go and do that and let it open your game up and open the game for others here. That's what this team really needs to get going. They'll eventually start creating for others by that. Nikhil had four assists in this one. Kyra didn't have any, but they needed him with the second unit going out and making plays. It's like pretty simple. Like Use your, your, your physical gifts. Nikhil, you can score with both hands. Go and do it. Kyrie, you're faster than pretty much everyone out there. And you have nice touch at times around the rim. Go and do it. Like, this isn't rocket science. Stop falling in love with the three and, and jumpers and just use your, your talents, your God-given ability, right? And then let it open up your game and the rest of your team. And that's when New Orleans started to get into this one was when they went on a run. And they wouldn't go away for the first three quarters, right? 
But then they took a lead in the third behind play from Nikhil Alexander-Walker. He had like four straight really good possessions. And that's when the Pelicans went on a 9-0 run to grab the lead. More of that and run plays for them to do that. Design things for them to do that. To get them going. And then go back to your free-form offense when these guys are in a groove knowing what they're doing. And I think you're going to win games. You know, not a lot of games. And maybe you still struggle in the fourth quarter because they completely reverted. And again, I, I don't I don't know how or why. If you can get them in a groove all game long, maybe it limits that. Sometimes that's, you know, really all that you can ask for, I think. So coming up, Bally Sports. No. Just... Just know, and I'm, I'm going to be a little bit mean coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we get to that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and family can come to connect, a place where you can study, knowing they're going to have dependable Wi-Fi, tons of coffee, French fries, McFlurries. Win or lose, it's a place you get excited to go to after a game. And look, I stop there all the time coming home from Pelicans games late at night, knowing I want to put forth a good show for you all. I don't want to sound tired. I don't want to look tired. You need a little bit of fuel, some French fries, some McNuggets, barbecue sauce. Like, come on, it doesn't get any better than that. And it's a place you always look forward to stopping to on long road trips. Give your legs a rest, grab some coffee or some food to get through that next, what, like eight hour stint that you're going to power through. So head to your local McDonald's to refuel and reconnect. You know, it's I'm saying this out loud and it sounds so great that maybe we need to do a Locked On Pelicans watch party there. So McDonald's, I'm loving it. All right, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen every single day. Free and available five days a week for you all, breaking down everything related to this team, good or bad. You care about the Pels? We're here to talk about it. And maybe you need the show, especially today, because you couldn't watch the game last night. Because it was not easy. And this is a problem. And it's really a problem when this team is 1-8. and eight. So the Bally Sports app was down. Not just in New Orleans, but like Bally Sports Network wide. So you couldn't watch them in Memphis if you're a Memphis Grizzlies fan. Or you couldn't watch the Memphis Grizzlies if you're a Memphis Grizzlies fan. If you're a Dallas Mavericks fan, you couldn't watch it on Bally Sports Dallas. All of them were down. This was a night that had a ton of NBA games and a ton of NHL games. And Bally Sports carries all that. It's 2021, right? This game started at 9 o'clock. For a team that going into it was 1-7 and, and likely to come out of it 1-8. and eight. If you were going to watch this game, you're, you're what I would call, in a sense, most likely a super consumer of the Pelicans. You love this basketball team. You want to know more about this basketball team. You are invested emotionally. You are probably invested financially in this team too and are likely to spend more money. I guarantee you, some of you who are listening here who might be season ticket holders or go to games, you get those emails for the Pelicans where you fill out the surveys based around like their sponsorships to kind of see what you remember and see who's getting their money's worth, right? Well, those sponsors that are so important to this team were not getting their money's worth from Bally Sports because it should not be this freaking hard to watch a basketball team in 2021. And this sucks because they have really good people there. Joel Myers and Antonio Daniels, Antonio Daniels, who's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network now, um, are are great on the call. I love listening to them. Aaron Hardigan -Wil uh, Wilkinson is awesome, friend of the show, wonderful person, and gives great analysis on there. Same with David Wesley, right? And you don't get to experience that, and it just sucks for them because this is such a bit of a disaster right now. You know, there's only one streaming service that has... Um, uh, Bally Sports New Orleans is going to call them Fox Sports New Orleans. Bally Sports New Orleans, that's Direct TV stream. You know, so if you've cut the cord, if you don't have Direct TV, you're out. You can't you can't watch the team easily or legally. And this is and, and the app's just terrible in the first place. Before I managed to switch to an illegal stream because that's what I did to watch this game. Um, you have to go watch an ad before the app tells you that you can't that that it's not working. So I watched this Bentley ad which. Pff, Bentley is wasting their freaking money, um, certainly uh, on me at least, that like only then tells me. So I turn on the game on the illegal stream and about six, seven minutes of the first quarter is gone. So I've missed part of that because of their stupid app not working. 
Pelicans fans deserve better than this. The Pelicans as an organization should be upset about this because this is not a way to build your fan base right now when you're already scaling back on things in arena. And if you watch this, and I watched the Sacramento stream for, for a chunk of it, they're doing stuff on the court and in the arena and fun promotions like New Orleans used to do that doesn't do anymore, right? So kind of the fan engagement, the... I don't land yap to everything to going, you know, it's kind of gone. And now they're making it hard to watch the team and the team sucks. This is when you need to slash prices, make games really fun and just put them everywhere so that as many people can tune in as possible and hopes you retain some of them because I think you're losing fans right now with how bad things are for this team. And if you just make it where uh, nine o'clock on a Wednesday night, I got to fight. Basically, I got to try really hard to watch a basketball game. I'm just going to do anything else. And those sponsors that are paying their money, the advertisers who are paying for commercials are losing out on me. Someone that would spend money on stuff and does spend money on stuff just like you on things associated with the Pelicans. This is not a good business decision. Mark Cuban for the Dallas Mavericks just spent, I think it was like, over $10,000 of his own money on making there be rebates for direct TV stream so that people would sign up for it basically just to watch the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, you you don't want all of direct TV stream so he's going to refund you like half of the the monthly cost of direct TV stream so that you just have an option to freaking stream Mavs games so that more people are watching them because he realizes that's only going to be a good thing for the fan, for his fan base and for the organization. It's that drastic of a step is how bad it is with the Bally stuff right now. And it sucks because they have really great people there and I like all of them and I don't want to have to like rail about their employer and all of that. I feel uncomfortable doing this now, but it's so bad. And for a team that doesn't have much goodwill with fans after David Griffin and Zion Williamson have straight up lied to them, you got to do something that creates some goodwill here and they're just burning that. Just that kind of cultural currency, just lighting it on fire, that goodwill, throw it in the garbage fire that is the rest of the team right now. Do something about this. Stream them, like, I get it, there's contracts, there's only so much they can do. You want that goodwill? Stream them for free on pelicans.com. I don't think the contracts would allow it. Or spend the money to do that, right? If there's a big game coming up and you want people to tune in, it's going to be fun. Buy, buy out the rights to that game from Bally Sports and put it on pelicans.com and be like, everyone come here and look. This is what we want to do is kind of fan appreciation because they've cut back on so much of this. It shouldn't be this hard to try and watch and root for the Pelicans and they're actively making it harder with a lot of their decisions right now. Call me Pelicans. I can help you with some of this stuff. All right, there you go. That's my rant. So thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen every single day. Thank you for tuning in, even when things aren't all of that great, but still a lot to talk about with the team. There's a good team in there somewhere. And I know we're all rooting for that to come out and hopefully their fight pays off this year. So that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans. Thank you all very much for listening. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. I'll be back with you all tomorrow to get you set for the weekend.